What's going on everybody? Jeff West here with Heli Direct, and today we have a very cool product that converts your raw 420 direct drive into a regular motor. So you get a full kit here with everything you need from frame sides, belts, all the parts. You can either get it with or without the motor. We are running the EcoDrift 3220 and you need your raw 420. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do on this build process is you need to strip down your 420. So you gotta pull the canopy. All we need is the boom, all the electronics, your main mother plate, up so we're going to pull the motor pull the side frames and everything in the kit we are going to put back on so i'm going to get everything stripped down to what we need and then we will go through the build before we get it stripped down i wanted to get a before weight of two pounds 13 ounces or 1276 grams that is ready to fly minus the battery and when we are done we will get a after we all right now that we got the helicopter disassembled we are ready to start assembling it with the new kit and what we are going to start with is the main pulley and tail pulley so we have our shaft cleaned off we have a little bit of one-way bearing grease on there we got the original sleeve out of the shaft that is in this motor here so make sure you have that sleeve out we're going to take our short sleeve right here this little spacer and we're going to slide that on first so it's slide it till it pushes all the way up and then we are going to Take our main pulley here and we want the screws to face the bottom of this plate and we are going to take our belt tensioner, hold it out of the way for a second. I put one way bearing grease already in the one way. We're going to slide that guy on and then you can release your tensioner and then I'm going to come back with one little spacer. They give you two. I'm going to put one on, see how it looks and if we have to add a second one, we can. Then we're going to take our short sleeve here with the hole in it we're going to line our holes up on the shaft so we're just going to push this sleeve down into place just like that and then we're going to come back with our tail pulley and we're going to slide this into place just like that and then we're going to come back with our screw two and a half millimeter driver lock tight on the screw and get your screw started and tighten it all the way down so now that we got our main bolt tightened up, we wanna grab our head, make sure, spin it, make sure everything is spinning nice and free. One-way bearing is working like it should. So now we can move on to getting the motor mount done and the motor mounted. So now our next step is going to be getting the motor mount and this block ready to go onto the actual frame when we put the sides on. So you'll notice on the motor mount here, it has a little loop shape and that loop will fit down into the back side so it's going to fit just like this and it's going to drop down and then you're going to come in from the top with this big 2.5 button head screw lock tight and snug that up tighten it down now we're going to come back with our motor we are going to be using the eco drift 3220 900 kv motor on this project so now we're going to drop our wires out to the side that this will be the back, this will be the front. So we're gonna drop the wires out to the side. We are going to flip it over. We're going to line our holes up here. And then we are gonna put four of our two millimeter screws in with Loctite, tighten them down. Once you have all four of your motor mount screws in, it'll look like this. Also too, make sure you put your lock nuts in before putting this mount on or you won't be able to get this side in. So you have your screws on this side and your lock nuts on this side. Now let's get this put onto our mainframe. So now we are going to mount the motor onto the mainframe assembly. Now you will notice in the original mount, there was two screws right here. And we're gonna be reutilizing these two holes to go with the two screws and the lock nuts that were inside of our mount. You can see we still have one. So what we wanna do is this mount is going to slide up into here just like this and that screw is going to, this screw here is going to rest inside. So you're just gonna get both of those screws started, one on each side, just get them started and snug them up so they can still move back and forth and then we can move on to putting the pulley or the motor pulley on and then we'll worry about tensioning everything once it's on the mainframe. Once you get both of those screws in, this is what you will have. I just snug them up, push the motor all the way back, and then just snug those up for now. We will loosen them and readjust. There is lock nuts there, so no lock tight. So now we can get the pulley onto the motor, get a rough idea of how our belt's going, but we don't want to tension it yet until we have the frame so we're not twisting on 
the actual plate. So we're gonna take our motor pulley. The kit comes with a 21 tooth pulley. We're gonna slide it on. We want our flat, so our flat spot up on the shaft right now. So we're gonna slide our pulley on. You don't want the pulley all the way against the motor mount and you don't want it all the way flush with the tip of the shaft. You want it to be with just barely the shaft showing right there. You can look down, which can be hard to see on camera, but I can look down from the pulley to the main gear and I can see that's about lined up right there. We can always adjust it after we get the belt on and make sure it's not riding too high or too low. So get that screw started, that grub screw. We're just gonna rock it off to the side for a second. We wanna run it down till it stops. And we want to readjust where we are right here. We wanna look, line it up. We wanna get that set screw to ride right on that flat spot of the shaft. And you can feel it and see it, of course. But that's about right where we want to be right there. And we're going to tighten that down. Loctite already applied. So now our motor pulley's on, our main pulley's on. Now we can take our belt. We can get our belt routed, get it over the pulleys. And then we can tension it after we have the frame on, rubbing alcohol, clean up the excess Loctite. And then we can see how it's looking. So our next step now is to get our frame sides put on the main mechanics. Now we need to use our battery latch. We have to put this back on. But just remember that the frame sides, they have a direction. This is gonna be your left frame side. This is gonna be your right frame side. And the way you know is that only one side is countersunk. So we need the right frame side because that's the side our battery latch is gonna go on. And you see four holes here. You see these four outer holes, one inner hole. You're gonna put your latch on. You can position it whichever way you would like. I'm gonna position it straight up where I can see the closed and open. So we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna get our two millimeter driver Loctite on our screws. We're gonna get our screws started and tightened up. So get one screw top and one screw bottom and tighten them all the way down. So now that our battery latch is installed, we can get this side of the frame on first. So in order to install the frame here, we're gonna go the frame side. We're gonna have to bend our motor wires up out of the way just a little bit. And we're gonna go after one, two, three, four screws with Loctite. So your rear screws here are gonna be countersunk with Loctite and your middle screw that's gonna go in here, you're not gonna put Loctite, that's a canopy mount screw. And then you're gonna come up to the top with two millimeter driver again, Loctite with a beauty washer, get that screw started, tighten it up. And then you're gonna put a screw right here, Loctite, so you're gonna have one, two, three, four screws locked tight and tightened all the way down on both sides. Your motor mount screws are gonna stay loose for right now. So get those screws put in, tighten everything up. So once you have both of your frame sides on, this is what it will look like. These back two screws right here that are loose are for the canopy and then these front holes are for the canopy. So before we tension the motor, we wanna do two things. We want to add our ESC tray, which is this piece of carbon fiber and there is two notches right here on each side of the frame and you have two corresponding notches that is going to slide into place here that is going to slide into place on the other side once our motor is tightened this will all be pinched together and it is not going to go anywhere the other thing we're going to want to do is mount our battery tray we want to get this done and mounted so we want this front part right here that's open to go to the front so it's going to sit in the helicopter just like this. And we're gonna be going off one, two, and three screws on each side. Again, we want the open tab. We're gonna take our tray, we're gonna slide it up into place here, and we gotta get it to go around that little nudge right here from the release, get that on. It only fits in one way, sits right into place, and then lock tight all six of your screws and tighten them all the way up. So now that we got our battery tray in, everything is tightened and Loctited. We got our latch installed. The last part of the battery tray is going to be these little guys sit inside of here. I don't know if you can see that, just like this. So you're gonna run a screw from the outside, countersunk 1.5 millimeter driver, one on each side, Loctite it and tighten it down. So now that we got our front battery supports in, battery tray is done, that's all Loctited. I already put a couple drops of Loctite on these two screws. So now it is time to tension the motor. Once the motor's tensioned, we can put the boom back on, skids on, and ESC mounted. It's a very simple swap. So what we wanna do, two millimeter driver all the way around. 
You're gonna wanna grab this motor, one finger on the pulley, and just push it forward, feeling the tension of the motor belt. Kinda hold it forward, hold it forward with your finger, come back, try to lock these two screws down as you're tensioning. Try to pull it as far forward as you can and tension at the same time. Once you feel like that belt is tensioned properly, which it feels pretty good right there, then come back and tighten these two sides down. Now that we got all of our screws tightened down, we wanna check and make sure that we have our pinion perfectly on the shaft. So we're gonna spin the motor over and we're gonna watch that belt and make sure it doesn't ride up or down. And it's riding pretty much in the center. I'm happy with that. Everything is working good. Now put your boom back on and we can put the skids on. Our boom is back on and tensioned. Now all that's left is to put the skids on, tighten those down. We can mount our ESC on this tray right here. And then you do need to use one of the old ESC mounts that goes in the top right here, which I'll explain that when we get there with a piece of carbon fiber here. That's for your XT60 mount after we get our ESC mounted and run all of our wires. The skid's on, Loctited. Now our ESC is going to mount here. So you want your ESC this way. I'm going to do motor wires forward, battery wires back. They are gonna come down to again this plate. We're gonna loosely put this in just for now, no Loctite, because our canopy bolts go through here, or that's how we hold the canopy on. And we're gonna put the tray on. So let's get the tray mounted. Now for the XT60 holder and the canopy mount, you're gonna put the XT60 holder with the tapered side up, the countersunk side, put it down there, 1.5 millimeter driver, Loctite on our screws. You're gonna put one screw on each side, tighten it all the way up. Once that is fully tightened up, we can grab the helicopter and we're just going to loosely put our screws in just to hold it in place for now. Cause again, we're going to have to remove these screws once we have our canopy installed. So we're just gonna leave it loose. And then whenever we get our power wires forward, we can mount our XT60, clean off the excess Loctite and then tighten it down to where we are happy with it. So it is all wired up and here is how I did my wiring. So first we'll start at the front. Make sure when you put your XT60 mount on, carbon fiber going up, get that XT60 as high as you can so you have room for your battery. Then come back. Of course, everything covered in heat shrink. I got all my wires running along here, flattened them out so everything cleared our servos. Kept going across the back here, tied it all into this junction and wired everything into my FBL unit. Now these stickers do not come with the kit. This is just some vinyl that I got off Amazon and just made some side frame stickers just to kind of give it the original look. So let's get the blades put back on it, canopy on it and get a final weight to see if we saved weight or not. Canopy and blades are back on. We are ready to fly. So let's get the scale and get a complete weight of what it is now. Ready to fly weight minus the battery is going to come in at two pounds, 11.2 ounces. So that is a 1.8 ounce weight savings or 1,226 grams. So overall saved 50 grams from the original version. So there you guys go, how to assemble and do the motor conversion on your SAB RAW 420. So I hope this helped some of you guys out. If it did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Take care and have a great day. Thank you.